So you just got a new monitor and you want to get the absolute best results. You want to have the lowest input lag, the lowest response time, and the best colors to win all those gunfights and prevent dying just like this. Oh, please, baby Jesus. No, God damn it, bro. I made a video on how to get the best settings on any ASUS monitor, but this video is going to cover all the other monitors out there, regardless of what brand it is. So without further ado, let's get right into it. And remember guys, I stream every Wednesday. So if you have any questions or you just want to stop by and chat with me just for a little bit, make sure to follow me on Twitch and Instagram. So for those PC users out there, the first thing you need to do is you need to set the correct refresh rate for your monitor. To do this, you could simply right click on the desktop and click on display settings. Then scroll all the way to the bottom and click on advanced display settings and change the refresh rate to the maximum amount that the monitor supports. If you notice that your monitor shows a different refresh rate than what was advertised, then chances are you are using an HDMI cable rather than a display cable. After that, if you haven't done so already, make sure you download the GeForce Experience or the uh, the AMD Experience app. I, th I think that's what it's called. And make sure your drivers are all up to date. Trust me, old drivers have been the culprit for all my graphical errors. So make sure you guys download those new drivers. And while you're here, make sure you enable G-Sync or FreeSync depending on if your monitor supports it or not. You can do this by right clicking the desktop once again and choosing the GPU control panel. In my case, I have the NVIDIA GPU, so I click on the NVIDIA control panel, went over to G-Sync and enabled it at the top. Now that we got all the preliminary stuff down, now it's time to get into the color side of things. Now this part is completely optional and yeah, if you're a gamer, you probably don't care as much about the colors, but you know, I'm going to mention it anyways. To do this, simply go to ratings.com and type in the monitor you are looking to calibrate. For example, if I had the BenQ Zoe XL2411P, I would type that in and scroll down to the post calibration section and download the ICC profile from there. Then I would navigate to the Windows search menu, type in the color management and choose the display you are looking to calibrate, then check off use my settings for this device. Then you just go over and click on add. Find the ICC profile that you saved and then click on add again. Simple as that, but uh, once again, not 100% necessary. Now time for the funner fun stuff. On your monitor settings, you need to swap over to game mode. Now, nine out of 10 times, if you are using quote unquote a gaming monitor, then you will not need to do this because this setting is already integrated in the monitor you are using. But for everyone else out there, by turning this on, it does create a lower input lag and a lower response time at the expense of some color accuracy. Also, if your monitor supports multiple gaming options, make sure to switch it over to your desired type. For instance, I play battle royale games and first person shooters, so I will set my mode over to FPS mode. And you will see by doing this causes your colors to switch over to much more dynamic colors, which is way better for shooter games since it will allow you to track your targets with ease. Also, if your monitor supports a feature that brightens up darker areas, make sure to turn that on. For instance, on my ASUS monitor, it is called Shadow Boost, and I have that turned up all the way to level 3. But for like BenQ monitors, I know they have Black Equalizer. That is the same thing as Shadow Boost, just a different name. And what this does is that it brightens up dark areas within your game, which allows you to track targets way better in dark areas. I did it here on my ASUS monitor and as you can see it is a night and day difference when it comes to being able to see. So guys, make sure you turn this feature on. As for the rest of the features, it really varies from game to game, whether you're playing an FPS game, an RPG game, or uh, I don't know, an adventure game, who knows. If your monitor is looking a little bit too saturated due to the change of mode, then you can alter it within the color tab on the on-screen display, same as the brightness and the contrast. There is no one size fits all for this part, it really all comes down to preference. If you want to know what I personally use on my personal monitor, check out the video in the description. It is for my ASUS monitor that I currently use for everyday gaming and everyday color editing. So. 
this is what I use and uh, yeah, hopefully this video has been able to help you. But with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been my full tutorial on how to get the best settings on whatever monitor you're using for gaming. Let me know in the comment section down below if you guys have any questions whatsoever or if you guys want, you can also visit me on Twitch and on Instagram and ask away any questions or if you want, you could just chat on there as well. But anyways guys, my name is Matthew. Thank you guys so much for watching. But as always, peace out.